Hey hey, welcome back to the channel, it's awesome that you're tuning in. So in today's video, we're going to take a close look at the M8 Pro Edition, another game box from China. They call this the hybrid box with an Android 12.1 plus game. But I can tell you the Android, yeah, we're not going to look at it because that is something you should avoid big time. We're going to focus what can this thing play and what can you actually do with it. <laughs> so what they're doing is slapping some old Android boxes together and slapping some Emialic because that's actually what it is. Emialic is a piece of software you can download for free yourself. So if you're going to get yourself the right chipset with an Android box, you can make it fairly cheap. This is a very tiny box by the way and this is absolutely the M8 Pro Mini. So when it comes to this, it's absolutely just an Android box. There was nothing special or a logo whatsoever. The only thing they did is adding an SD card to it with some firmware, adding some controllers, and that's actually it. So the controller, yeah, that is a little bit of a problem when it comes to these things. So what do I mean? It's very simple. So there are like all kinds of different quality controllers out there. When I'm feeling the ABHY, they feel quite okay. They're not the best controllers but also not the worst out there. They are all the same, working on two AAA batteries, and on the bottom we're going to get an on off switch. We're going to get an HDMI cable, the power supply. We're going to get one dongle, it seems to be. This is the configuration that we're going to get two controllers and one dongle. We have seen it, or I have seen it many times before. We do have an instruction, instruction manual, and with the instruction manual, or the user manual, it explains how everything works and what are we going to get in the inside. So what you're going to get is not the super console X typical stuff. Sometimes we're going to get a quite different situation where they lock the system and giving you more like a plug and play solution. Yeah, and if you still want to use the Android box, you can use this remote, just the cheap remote you're going to get with these cheap Android boxes. But again, won't really recommend it. In the inside, we're only going to get ourselves a 64 gigabyte. And do you know what's kind of bummer? They are using a lot of cheap cars. They're not even branded. Back in the day, they had original sanded, but also fake ones. But now we're just having very cheap cars with no brand whatsoever. So I recommend backing them up because if you don't do this, they can get corrupted fairly easy. And if they're corrupted, there is no way of retrieving a new firmware version for this thing, or you're just going to get yourself like the stock version. The product only comes with two older USB ports, not even 3.0. Then we're going to get ourselves an HDMI, the input for the power supply, RG45, and the Navy out that most of the time doesn't even work with the emulation or retro emulation software. Nevertheless, let's plug everything in and let's play some games. Another really annoying thing is there is no on off switch on the system itself, so you need to do something with the power supply. But what makes this thing quite unique at this point is that it comes with a weird Android version. And what do I mean? Normally when you're going to load up a device like this, it will instantly load into the game section, but it doesn't do that at all. It basically sides load the Android and just load up a new interface and software. But this is a quite interesting story because we're not going to get different software. We're just going to get ourselves a weird looking Android version that has Google Play and Netflix. Take consideration, these boxes are most of the time rooted, so you cannot even use Netflix 1080p. But putting it up over here in the game section, we're just going to get the menu that we're normally going to get. But let's take a close look at the menu. What can we actually play with this device? There are all kinds of platforms on it. Think about N64, PlayStation Portable. But with these very cheap, like low power boxes, not everything is going to be running perfectly. All the way up to PlayStation 1, I think it's not going to be a problem. So there we're going to mainly focus on just to see what kind of platforms will run on it and what not at all. So we can press the Y button and with Y we do have an option to search. The first thing and that's quite positive that the interface works quite fast. It's always interesting to see how everything is unique to its own and I mean especially when you're looking at all the different boxes we've reviewed. So let's say Mortal Kombat, I want to search for that. Now we're going to get a different page where we see all of the 21 games. The unfortunate thing is, is no idea what kind of platform we're playing on. We can look at the pictures, but that's actually it. And when going into a system like Game Boy, we can put games in the favorite list. Let's say we're pressing the X button, and this is basically how it works all. I think the interface is quite easy to navigate. We're pressing the favorite button, 
the only downside I think there is there is no general favorite list so you can put all of your games on one big list that is a little bit of a bummer so it's quite limited when it comes to the interface start to select doesn't do anything pressing at the same time some of them even have the option to configure new controls so this system is completely locked so let's start off with some basic stuff like Game Boy Advance there is no way of changing the interface ratio. The only thing that we're going to get pressing select and start bringing you to this special quick load, quick save menu. Key choice, the choice the key can be switched out. We can quit the game this way and that's it. So that's actually how everything works. Oh man, the filter they are using is this very strange filter that looks absolutely rubbish on this. So far so good, when it comes to the audio, no weird stuff going on. The annoying thing is when you're getting into Game Boy, where everything is stretched and even having 6x9 aspect ratio, but also the same kind of weird blurry, not like blurry, it's like this very strange filters over it. I know why they're adding this, simply because everything looks really bad when it comes to stretched out. But the overall gameplay is just fine. Another thing I've noticed, like the general volume is absolutely low. When I'm going to mess with my television, it has been set to 90% of maximum volume. So it's crazy to think about that. The output that comes from this is very low. The only thing I can maybe figure out is that getting myself the extra remote because the eternal audio is not on the right volume of the Android box itself because that's actually what it's using now. So let's see if we can make a quick slot. Is that, is that the thing what happened? Let's see if that helped, worked out. No, I think I pressed, pressed the wrong button. Uh, there we go. There we go, let's go to the load. I have no idea how this works, seriously. No. No, I have no idea how it actually works. I tried a couple of things, but nope. So it seems to be it doesn't work or I'm just messing it up. There is one thing I do wonder. Let's restart this machine. And can we actually save in the game itself? Because that can be a problem. Memory card. Save OK. OK. Now we're going out of the game. Let's see actually how this works. Let's boot up the game again. And let's see if they have the option enabled for saving. Memory card. No. No tech and forward. Now, so basically that, that is also something that is a problem. Save function doesn't work at all. So far I have tested. So let's try some PlayStation Portable. This is a system that is very demanding for these cheap Android boxes. There's one very strange thing going on. So you can make a quick load, quick save. Already mentioned before. For me, it was a hit or miss. So let's load it. Nothing works. Okay. Let's put slot two. Okay. So the save function or the quick load, quick save seems to be working just fine. So what's interesting? Pressing select to start. We're not going to get into the emulator itself. So there's nothing we can adjust. We're even having this strange configuration if you want to mess around with the controls. But let's get into the gameplay and show you what we're actually going to get. And yeah, the cheap boxes don't have very good emulation performance for three dimensional games played portable. Tekken 5 is a game that will run okay on these boxes. I know for sure they already set it to one time frame skipping. That is always what they're doing with this. But the overall performance for PlayStation Portable is not bad at all. So let's quit it and let's see what we're going to get when it comes to different kind of games. So there are all kinds of different games that we can play. But of course, if you want to look into, think about um, God of War, even if it's on here, it's not going to be running fine. 
What's kind of cool that it actually runs a lot of, let's say, basic games. They can also play on the tablet, for example, or your phone. But I think it's a very cool addition. The quick load quiz save function is going to be very handy with this. And not to forget, the original save function also seems to be working when I tested out with the previous game. But when it comes to N64, this is going to be a hit or miss. Simply because N64 is quite difficult to emulate on these cheaper boxes. But if you're going to search long enough, there are a couple of games that can be played just fine on here. One of those examples is this game called Snowboard Kids. It's a lot of fun and this is really cool. And the overall performance is absolutely great compared with some of the emulators I've tested it for. I kind of really enjoy some old school snowboard kits. The question remains, are all the buttons mapped? Because I cannot shoot my snow. I have the idea that they completely messed it up with this. That is something I just wanted to see and check out. So they did mess up the controls, making this game basically unplayable. And let's take a close look at the arcade part, because that is one of my things I love to play on these. It runs perfectly, but again, they are using this very strange filter over it. The filter you do see a lot when it comes to Pandora's boxes, and again, no way of changing it out. Next up, let's try a main game. I did notice a lot of games are not on here. For example, Street Fighter The Third Strike, or think about the other cool things like Mortal Kombat are not here, only the console versions. So we cannot benchmark it like I'm always doing. So I just want to pick up a random game. So that's what we're going to get with the emulation performance. So doing quick teardown and let's see what we're going to get with the mainboard itself. It gets really hot and the only cooling this thing has is this tiny cooling element. There is no active cooling, a little bit of a bummer. Some of the Super Console X does have this. Okay, there are total two screws wicked. Okay, that's basically holding this thing together. Can I lift it out? Always remove the SD card. Would not be the first time I will rip a SD card in half and whoa this thing is really hot I cannot even hold it wow it's really hot so that's not a good sign in my opinion next thing we're going to do is removing let's see if it can remove it at all that is amazing maybe yeah they glued it that is the thing they are doing most of the time so I can even not hold it for a long time that's how hot it gets so there is not even a movement in here. So unfortunately, there is no way of checking out what kind of chip they're using. So the main board is made in 2020. So this thing is quite old. And they are selling it as new. But already, that was one of the giveaways, of course, was that we're having like old USB ports. So there's nothing much RAM chips over here. So I'm guessing we have around 4 gigabytes of RAM. But this is a very rare moment that I don't show very often. With teardowns, there's absolutely a risk I'm going to destroy something. And this is a very unique, simply because I was heating up the heatsink just to check out if I can slowly remove it with some prior tools and be very gentle. And you will never guess, but the chip, it's still on my cooling element. <laughs> and I completely ripped it off from the main board. That is something I have never experienced like that. The M8 Pro Mini is a very interesting piece of, let's say, hardware, but especially the software. The hardware, couldn't really tell what kind of specs because we have, you have zero in it here. If you didn't skip it, I ripped the chip off and there was no way of getting the chip from the cooling element. Don't know what kind of freaking glue they used, but it's crazy. But nevertheless, what are we actually going to get? It's a very strange configuration. Very limited, it's a plug and play situation, but when some things like N64 makes it unplayable because some of the buttons aren't mapped. Let me know in the comments what do you think of a device like this. Thank you for watching, consider subscribing, hit the little bell, and it would be great to see you in the next video. Mm.